Hi, my name is Bao, and this is We Deserve Better Rom-Coms, the show where we take a look at and analyze romantic comedies. Yes, we will be gushing over the romantic moments, rolling in our eyes at the cheesy moments, and may even ugly cry together at the moments that pull at our heartstrings. Most importantly, we will have some fun, because if there's one thing that rom-coms have taught us, it is to not take life so seriously. Dash and Lily is an eight episode series on Netflix. It takes place in New York City around Christmas break when Dash and Lily find themselves alone for the holiday. Dash and Lily are brought together by notebook. But before I get into things, go watch the show if you haven't because I will be spoiling some things for you. Lily is this quirky 17 year old girl who makes her own clothes, hang out with adults, but doesn't have any friends her own age. She loves books and Christmas. Dash is a smart, popular rich boy who likes to brood over his long-lost Sophia. He loves books, but hates Christmas. Lily leaves behind a notebook at the Strand bookstore as a way to find her soulmate. Dash and Lily dare each other to do these things that they have never experienced before. And hashtag family, because the majority of Lily's dares involve Dash interacting with one of her family members. We find out that one of the big reasons that Lily doesn't have friends her age is because she was made fun of for being different when she was in middle school. And yes, the scene where her grandpa offered to take her to get ice cream after she was heartbroken over being made fun of, that scene was so sweet and it made me cry. Dash is full of himself. He's that kid in high school that all the girls would totally have a crush on, including me because I was basic in high school. He reads these books that are so mature and thinks he's better than everyone. But to be fair, what 17-year-old boy who is smart, popular, and rich wouldn't have a false sense of confidence, so I'm giving him a pass for now. We don't really get to know too much about Dash's baggage other than he's a child of divorce, and that can be very traumatizing, and from the looks of things, it continues to affect his relationship with his parents. He doesn't seem to like his mom, and his dad is not very present. What I love about the dares are that they are gentle nudges for Dash and Lily to step outside of the bubble, and in doing so, learn a little bit about the other person and a little bit about themselves. At the beginning of the show, it's clear that Dash and Lily are unhappy in the bubbles, but feel helpless to do anything about it. And so, at the first chance of something different and new, of course they both went for it. There's a funny scene where Dash is talking out loud about what he should do regarding going back to Sophia or doing something new. And the camera pans to a bunch of Japanese older ladies, and without saying anything, we can tell what is exactly on their minds. The scene is not only funny, but it shows us what happens when Dash is able to push through his uncomfortableness and continues. He gets progress, or in this case, a nicely formed mochi. Lily, on the other hand, grows when she is able to stand up for herself and her identity. We see that in the dare when Lily has to destroy something she just created and have formed a bond with, and she's like, no, she stands up for herself. Langston and Benny are dating at the beginning of the show, and they are a cute couple, albeit young, dumb, and in love. He breaks up and Langston, in his annoyance, tells Lily that her parents are in Fiji for a job. Did anyone else think of the Truman Show when you heard Fiji or did I just date myself? Lily gets into an emo, poetry kind of mood and goes to open mic at the place that her bully Edgar invited her to. And I'm over here like, yes girl, you tell him. Someone in the audience says, maybe he just liked you. And Lily like, heck no to that patriarchal BS. Lily tells Edgar how he made her feel and she's and he says, I was young and stupid. And I agree, patriarchy hurts everyone. Edgar acknowledges it and tries to make amends. It's cathartic to see Lily get the closure that she deserves with this. In real life, we often don't get the closure that we deserve from the people that hurt us, and we kind of have to make peace with that. Lily and Dash actually do get to meet at Priya's party, but they don't realize that it is each other. I love Lily's dress, by the way. That's what I think high schools will be wearing to a party. But what do I know? Maybe that's what rich New Yorker kids wear. I mean, if there's one thing Gossip Girl has taught us, it's that 20-something-year-olds pretending to be high schoolers have good fashion sense. While we are on the topic, Let's just take a second to appreciate the clothes in this show. These outfits are so cute, and I would totally wear most of these outfits. So there's this scene when the grandpa rents out the temple for his family the day before Lily and her parents are to fly out to Fiji. Side note, 
Her father job must be super generous with the moving package because getting a plane ticket with short notice and during the holidays are like super expensive. Anyway, Grandpa calls Langston to the front and goes over the things that Langston has done to disappoint him that year. And I'm just thinking, yes, that is the good Asian grandparent pettiness right there. You keep a list of everything and just before the end of the year when the grandkids think that they are safe, bam, hit them with it at Christmas. Dash goes to a Jonas Brother concert trying to find Boomer, who is ignoring him, as Boomer should. Dash is like, why are you so mad I came to a Jonas Brother concert for you? And Boomer is like, OMG, yeah, I could bull on that. First of all, making fun of Jonas Brothers is a low-hanging fruit. Mid-2000s called and they want the joke back. Did I just use a lazy joke to make fun of another lazy joke? Yes, yes I did. Second, Boomer was pissed because Dash was isolating his friends and being selfish. Dash coming to the concert because he wanted Boomer to help him find Lily is so pretty selfish. Nick Jonas, coming off his acting high of Jumanji, gives Dash the equivalence of a thumbs up to go after the girl. Dash does learn to lean on his friends more and take down some of his walls, which actually would be better to emphasize than him learning to be selfish. Just saying. Dash and Lily finally meet again at the bookstore where it all started. I appreciate that they kept the decoration low-key. It's realistic of what a high school boy can accomplish within the time limit. Oh, and also there's Sophia. Sophia is Dash's ex who comes back to New York City and wants to get back together. They realize though that they are different people and don't get back together. Sophia is awesome. She's pretty, she's supportive, and she's not a mean girl. And that's refreshing for a YA series. But she is a little cynical about love. At the end, Sophia ends up a boomer, and I'm just like, why? Sophia should just be single. She doesn't need a man. I like boomer, but I don't think that aligns with the character at all. She spends the whole show trying to get back into what is comfortable for her, and for her, comfortable is being in a, re in a relationship. Being her awesome single self would actually be the better ending. Final thoughts. Boomer, love him. Benny, love him. Mrs. Basil E, love her. Lily's adult friends, love them. New York City around Christmas time, love it. And last but not least, I love Priya. I especially love the fact that she's the only one that calls Dash by his full name, Dashiell. Dash and Lily has a splash of holiday magic, funny lines, and lovable characters. And a show that I would not mind watching once every year around the holidays.